Hi, Shane. Hi. <laughs> so I'm here with Shane Wynn, Akron photo star. Uh, 20 years in the business. Let's see. I'm 40. I think I started my business when I was 18, formally. So yeah, like 22. Okay. Yeah. So 22 years shooting. Um, I saw a talk. It's going to be posted on our blog that you guys are going to be able to see here. And in that talk, you talked about being a wedding photographer and going to editorial. But one of the things that we talked about was you went to Akron U for your undergrad degree. You also worked at F-Stop. Were you working at F-Stop at the same time you were a student? I was. While I was a student um, at the university, because um, I was trained in film and I was shooting weddings, and it was really the you know um, an imaginative way for me to be able to to shoot a lot and have my film processed at a discount. Woohoo! Yeah. You gotta love that. Yeah. Look for all the shortcuts. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, and you said f-stop camera was like a great learning resource for you too how, how can you just explain why where that might benefit other people well at the university um, I had a I was getting a fine arts degree so I learned a lot um, about concept and about um, you know art basically but I didn't learn a lot technically for what I wanted to do and at f-stop camera I worked with a lot of um, a lot of gentlemen that had been at this for quite a while and they gave me all the cliff notes and I recommend cliff notes wherever you can cut corners learn something faster from someone that already knows and also these are people that cared about me and cared to help me and sort of guide me through this so that's where I learned a lot of the shortcuts and a lot about how to do this thing that I do in my locale where I live and what the landscapes like yeah and that's one of the things you also mentioned about you know, understanding your location and, you know, how is Akron different than, let's say, Cleveland or New York City or anywhere else in the country? How did you find your own hold? Well, here in, in Akron, it's a lot about having a face-to-face -face relationship with a person and building trust and just um, working. People want to work with you if they like you. They, they want to work with people that are cool. They, you know, if you're going to spend time with someone, um, they want you know you want it to be as enjoyable as possible and so you know I learned a lot about yeah building relationships in that way when I forget referring tell me the question again <laughs> uh, I guess how you made Akron your own you know what what were those how is Akron different than some of the other markets that you're yeah. you know may have entered into and how did you take hold of it because you really have right yeah well I guess so that was the base of it was that it's it's about meeting people in person and sometimes even out of context so you want to go out there, you want to be a go-getter, you want to hustle, but you don't want to overwhelm people and say, hey, I'm a photographer, and you know, I'm awesome and you should work with me. It's more about just sort of learn what other people are doing first, learn what their needs are, and how then wait for the right timing so that you can maybe present yourself in a way that is beneficial to them and beneficial to you. Perfect. That's exactly the truth. <laughs> um, so I know you have a family. Do you have like a daily ritual to get yourself out of the house and onto a creative path? You know, you got kids, you got the husband. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that you think about, like your morning prep? Well, it's absolute chaos. <laughs> and my family is used to this. So the way that I get myself going on these creative things I do every day is that they're on the calendar. People call me, I, I'm very, I look at my calendar constantly. Um, I'm very aware of what I need to be, but I just get it on the calendar and I schedule my life around those creative projects and balancing that with making an income. So, um, yeah, I, people call me up, I say yes, I make it happen. I'm doing that today. I have some shoots. I, you know, that it's a shoot that I completely created myself. I've coordinated it with another person. I have about 10 different places to be and I have time periods when I'm showing up. So I just kind of schedule it and then I do it and I try not to think about it too much. <laughs> That's awesome. <clears throat> okay, perfect. So another question is, so you did weddings for like 20 years of your career mm -hmm. and you jumped then off into the magazine world. You want to do magazine editorial work. Did you cut weddings off totally? Is that what I understood you say? You just said no more? I did. And why is that? Oh my, well, so I'm very grateful for weddings and I learned a lot of my technical skills there. That's how I accrued a lot of my equipment. But it, it's an extremely stressful job. 
And I always say the first decade that I shot weddings, I literally felt like I was gonna throw up every time I went to do one. And um, it's a very high stress kind of scenario, but I took it on because I knew I could learn a lot. But it sort of, I feel like it has a shelf life and it's, it would be really difficult to do it your entire life. And I think most of the wedding photographers I know do eventually find that that has like a, de <laughs> it dies at some point because it's so stressful. It's like being creative in a frying pan is what oh. it is, you know? <laughs> and it's a good place to start because I feel like if you can do that, you can show up and do anything. And a lot of it is managing your craft and the technical side of what you're doing along with the drunk uncle who jumps in front of you right as the bride's walking down the aisle. So if you can kind of, you know, coordinate all those balls in the air at once then you're you know you're good, good starting dude. point yeah but so yeah I kind of um, felt like that had um, I had done that and I had sort of also I had sort of mastered that I learned all these things I wanted to learn and now I was ready to to um, apply it more to a more creative project okay so how do you feel about the word inspiration do you wait for inspiration or do you create your inspiration I think you can find inspiration almost anywhere. I'm constantly gathering inspiration. If I had my druthers, I would hang out at bookstores like half my life and just look at magazines. At I mean, you can you can find it anywhere. I get it delivered to my front door because I get all these these magazines and and I read books and I go and I talk to other people about what they're doing. And it can have absolutely nothing to do with what you're doing. And at this point in time, I know, I think I understand better how to harvest inspiration. So I, I have these lists, I have lists about things that bother me that I wanna change. And I have a list of creative projects and techniques that, that I wanna implement. And when the two of those, when the two of those like meet each other and they marry and start to make out, that's when I have a really good idea. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you, you talked about things that upset you and um, do you ever make work that is for change? Can you tell me about a project like that that you did? Well, um, I'm actually, because I've just started to work on creative projects and, and um, have been freed up in that way a bit more, I have a lot of ideas where I want to do this more. But I, I thus far is, have sort of, like for example, I shot um, GG9, the gay games, and that is the LGBTQ issues are something that, I, that are very important to me. So um, I jump on an opportunity to shoot something that um, puts that in the forefront, you know, and to, I want to be associated with that. So in some ways I've gotten to do that, but I, I hope to do that a lot more in the future as well. Yeah, because you're just really, this is your second year really focusing in this direction. So. And, I, and it is, and I, and I am starting to do some artistic things, but I also now work for 10 publications and have my own business and have a family. <laughs> and you got to manage it all. Yeah. Yeah, you got to love that. The, the truth is that saying, if you want something done, ask the busiest person you know. That's yeah. how it goes down. Like, I'll fit it in, I will put it on the schedule, and I will show yeah. up. Well, you did tell me something exciting, too, that you're working on. You have, like, a gallery every month that you get to, like, curate yourself of yes. different Yes, I just ideas. added a new publication. And this is what happens, you know. As you keep going, if you hone your skill and, and you become better at what you do, then you can then you get to start to gather the cream off the top. And, and I'm starting to do that now, and I'm a little bit more than excited about it. But most recently, I added a publication that said, "Just you're, we want you to shoot whatever you want, <laughs> and you can do a gallery every single week." And I have a list like this, you know. So I'm just going to start knocking those off. I've already started scheduling two of them. Oh, I can't wait to show you one. It's so exciting. I, I can't talk about it yet. I it's... can't wait to see them. Yeah. So, so. Um, I will have links up for everyone to check out your work and things like that. Um, is there anything else you want to tell my students, other photographers, people who are like wanting a change in their shift in their life? Yeah. So don't, you know, don't wait for permission to do what you want to do. And I read that somewhere and I didn't really, like there's a lot of things where I would read them and I'm like, I don't really know what that means. What it means is go shoot what you want to shoot, like squeeze it in between making your livelihood and then find a home for it later or just shoot it and it's yours and you're now associated with this thing and this message. Um, and also, 
put in the work on the front end, there's nothing to replace the work and keep your head down and hone your skill um, and just sort of ignore all that other stuff going on around you because people will give you a lot of messaging about what you have to do and what you need to do and etc. But just, um, you know, if you want to, to sort of do what you want to do later, the, you do need to be good at what you do. And that's how you can make those choices. And it took me all of two decades, you know, to just keep at it. If you really care about it, it will carry you through. Find something you love, it'll carry you through. Well, thank you. This was awesome. <laughs> and uh, look for all the links.